Abuse and Neglect of Children, Part 1. Abuse and neglect are not new phenomena. It has occurred across all human history, across all cultures. Abuse and neglect of children with disabilities is a vicious, triple-edged sword, one that wounds deeply and destructively. Consider the cruelty of these three blades. 1. Children with disabilities are more vulnerable to abuse and neglect. 2. Any child who experiences abuse and or neglect is at greater risk for failure in schools, in relationships, and in the workplace. Victims of abuse and neglect are more likely to pass on that legacy to the next generation. 3. Abuse and neglect can cause disabilities. It can cause symptoms that are misdiagnosed as a disability, resulting in overlooking the actual abuse and neglect. As professionals, we must become advocates for the safety of all children. Here you see the agenda for the entire presentation on abuse and neglect of children. It will be delivered in parts, and you can see that for this part, we will cover definitions and reporting responsibilities. Neglect, 64.1%. Physical abuse, 16%. Medical neglect, 2.2%. Sexual abuse, 8.8%. Psychological maltreatment, 6.6%. Other unknown or missing, 16.3%. The five highest states, Florida, 134,567. California, 89,500. New York, 80,077. Texas, 69,065. Georgia, 39,802. In our region, Arkansas, 9,180. Louisiana, 12,472. Oklahoma, 13,414. In our society, we have been in denial concerning this problem for decades. Others have worked tirelessly. For example, the Children's Defense League has been working to defend children for over 30 years. It is important that educators stay informed. Every year, every semester, every month, you should check these websites because every day you work with children and adolescents. I had been teaching for 10 years before I worked for a district that addressed child abuse and neglect in a staff development workshop. That was 1986. This illustration spoke to me, and I have kept it all these years as a reminder of the children I worked with. The ones I knew something was wrong. I just couldn't figure out what. Any person having cause to believe the reporter should recognize that simply having cause to believe is a very low threshold to meet and that the law is weighted in favor of protecting the child. Maya's story Maya was raped at the age of five and afterwards was reluctant to tell the name of her rapist. When she did finally tell her family, the man was arrested and quickly released. She heard soon thereafter how he had been vengefully murdered, and she was traumatized. I stopped speaking. I thought if I spoke, my voice might just go out and randomly kill people, Angelo explained. She didn't utter one word for five and a half years. During this time, a teacher named Mrs. Flowers would invite Maya to come visit for cookies and lemonade. Maya listened as Mrs. Flowers read Dickens and Shakespeare and others. 
After almost five years, Mrs. Flowers began to challenge Maya to speak. Maya communicated with her by writing on a notepad, but Mrs. Flowers kept encouraging her to speak. Maya Angelou remembers that it had been so long since she had spoken that she was surprised she actually still had a voice. So I started speaking again, and I've hardly ever stopped since. Today, Maya Angelou has been a professor, an author, and our nation's poet laureate. If not for Mrs. Flowers, her story would be a very different one. Anyone suspecting abuse or neglect of a child is obligated to report it to Child Protective Services. Failure to report physical or mental abuse or neglect of a child is a crime, punishable by a fine and or imprisonment. Immunity from civil or criminal liability is guaranteed if the report is made in good faith and without malice. Reports of child abuse or neglect are confidential. There are five rules that you should follow as a teacher. 1. Resolve doubt in favor of the child. 2. Trust your instincts, your gut feelings. 3. Remember that you do not have to prove that abuse is occurring. Reporting is a request for an investigation. 4. Remember that an educator who reports is on firm legal ground. 5. Believe the child who discloses and tell the child that he or she has done the right thing by telling you. Here is the definition of abuse. The non-accidental infliction or threat of infliction of physical injury or emotional or mental damage to a child by a person responsible for the child's health or welfare. Abuse can also involve withholding of needed care for the child. What should teachers do? Let your class know that they can talk to you or a counselor or a nurse. If you sense a child is trying with difficulty to talk to you, sit down with a simple project, crayons or a puzzle and let the child know you will believe and help him or her with any problem. Don't promise to tell. Assure the child he or she is not in trouble. Tell a child exactly what to expect. If you don't know, say so. But let the child know he or she can expect to be supported and helped by you. Respect the child's privacy by not discussing the situation out of school. Seek out and rely on your support system at school. Follow the district rules. If you are concerned about an administrator not making a report, do so yourself. You might otherwise be liable for failure to report. Definition of Neglect Depriving a child of living conditions which provide the minimally needed physical and emotional requirements for life, growth, and development by a person responsible for a child's health or welfare. In other words, inadequate food, inadequate housing and clothing, lack of needed medical attention, abandonment, lack of supervision or guidance, unmet educational needs, etc. Neglect is the most common form of child maltreatment. Three times as many children are victims of neglect, 63.2%, as are victims of physical abuse, 18.9%. Another 9.9% are recorded as victims of sexual abuse, 4.9% emotional and psychological maltreatment, and 16.9% other. I just can't imagine what other means.
This concludes part one of abuse and neglect. In part two, we will examine statistics and talk about victims and perpetrators.